Well, hello. <laughs> it's wonderful to have folks back in the church, and it's wonderful that um, you folks at home are still able to, to join with us. Um, obviously, we've done this before, but it still feels a little bit strange to have a mixture of people here and then talking to a camera. But I'm sure we'll all get used to it for as long as we, we need to have things like this. But a very warm and loving St. Mark's welcome to all of you. Um, it is great to be here on this Palm Sunday. Um, things will look slightly different, but hopefully those here have got their palm crosses. And this will be a test of anyone back home as to whether we actually read the, the email notices, because um, you were invited if you wanted to, to pick up a palm cross from outside the church on Saturday. If you haven't got one, uh, don't worry, we'll have an image on the screen so that you can at least reflect on that when we, we hold up the, the palm crosses shortly. Um, just a few notices for you this morning. Um, our 6 p.m. daily prayers. Uh, the St. Mark's in-house ones actually come to an end tonight. Tonight is our last 6 p.m. day with Holy Week upon us and the, the loosening of restrictions that it was a good time to, to bring those prayers for the nation to, uh, to a close. But thank you very much, uh, particularly to the Literics, um, who I know are at home at the moment. Thank you so much for leading us in prayer since I think November, wasn't it? All the way through from November. So thank you. Uh, but there will be one more 6 p.m. prayers later in the week on Wednesday, led by uh, Churches Together in Hitchin. And Val Reed, is it? Val Reed from Christchurch uh, will be leading that. Okay. So our Lent appeal is still going. Uh, thank you very much to all those who have contributed to that. Um, I'm sure by now you all know what it's about. It's um, the Princess Basma Centre in Jerusalem that does a lot of work with uh, people with learning difficulties and disabilities uh, from Palestine. Uh, so it is a fantastic appeal and they are doing some amazing work in really difficult times. Um, so if you feel able to give to that appeal, please do so. If you're not sure how to do that, you can talk to um, John or Helen uh, about that. Okay, next. <laughs> So the Hitchin team, so I'm sure you all know that we are part of a, an Anglican team in Hitchin, it's not just us uh, on our own, um, but the whole team are coming together for the uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday evening at 7 till 8 p.m. to do Holy Week talks, to talk about a theme, um, a particular topic, a different one each day by a couple of different ministers, a um, couple of the different, the different clergy in the town. Um, so it'd be really great to have some people along. That is on Zoom. Um, so... If, you, if you're kind of used to joining us on Zoom, you know the drill with that. Um, but yeah, it'd be great just to have people along to, to think about our faith, to spend some time really wrestling with what we believe and why uh, during that. And then we end with, with evening prayer or night prayer, uh, Compline, uh, which is a great, quiet, reflective service of prayer. So it'd be great to have as many people as possible along for that. So yes, Easter at St. Mark's. It is Holy Week. We've got some services coming up this week. And most of them are going to be like this. They're going to be a mixture of in-person and for folks joining us at home. But Maundy Thursday, uh, is a, I've read the service for this. It's obviously new to me, um, but it's a really beautiful kind of contemplative Iona style uh, communion service. Um, and there'll be a sort of a reflective, uh, not quite a sermon, but uh, an imaginative reflection, I think is the best way of describing it. Uh, so that's Thursday at 7.30. Um, I don't think we've got many people booked in to be in person. So there's plenty of space to, to come in in person. Uh, and the same with Good Friday at 10 a.m. Plenty of spaces available in the church for that. Um, and yeah, that will be a, a service of the word. Um, I think, Andrew, you're speaking about, aren't you? So Andrew will be reflecting on Good Friday uh, with us and for us in that. And then for the, the, the people with young children, um, families with young children, between one and three, we've got our Easter adventure trail. So if you came to the, the, um, the Advent adventure, it's a similar prospect. There'll be an Easter egg hunt. Uh, you have the possibility of getting a hot cross bun um, and there'll be some videos to watch. So it'd be great. You don't have to book for that. Just turn up um, and we'll be here to welcome you and show you what, what's happening. Uh, and then at 4 p.m., uh, there'll be a, uh, a short family service, like a children's service, reflecting on the packs that you'd have picked up at the Easter adventure. Um, so I hope that makes sense. But yeah, any of those services, people are welcome to join and it'd be great to, uh, to spend some time worshipping together during this very special week. And then, of course, Easter Sunday, 10 a.m., our, our um, Easter Sunday service. 
Oh yeah, there you go. That's just a bit more details about the, the Easter Adventure Trail. Uh, so do join us um, if you're able to for that. And I think that's it from me. So I'm going to hand over to Andrew now, who's going to lead us into our worship. Morning, everybody. I've done the three things I need to do to be operational, so everything should be fine from now on. It's lovely to be taking part in this service and to see all those faces that we love so much. And seen on screen, but it's much better in 3D. So we begin our worship. Hosanna to the Son of David, the King of Israel. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. The Lord be with you. Dear friends in Christ, during Lent, we have been preparing by works of love and self-sacrifice for the celebration of our Lord's death and resurrection. Today, we come together to begin this solemn celebration in union with the church throughout the world. Christ enters his own city to complete his work as our saviour, to suffer, to die, and to rise again. Let us go with him in faith and love, so that, united with him in his sufferings, we may share his risen life. Now, I invite you to hold your palm cross up, or if you're at home and you haven't managed to pick up a palm cross, just focus on the one on the screen. Oh, there they are. Isn't that lovely? We focus now on this very special day in which Christ rode in his own interpretation of majesty, which was, in a sense, in all humility, through the streets of Jerusalem. God, our Saviour, whose Son, Jesus Christ, entered Jerusalem as Messiah to suffer and to die. Let these palms be for us signs of his victory, and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our King, and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. And now let us go forth in music, praising Jesus our Messiah as we hear, and if you're at home, sing, All Glory, Lord and Honour.
one human being was ever without sin. And it is him we praise this morning. Jesus Christ, both human and divine, our Messiah. And so we think back to our own sin of these past days. And we take a few moments now to reflect on them before we offer our profound apologies to God and seek his forgiveness. God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Let us then show our love for him by confessing our sins in penitence and faith, saying together, Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Collect for Palm Sunday. True and humble King, hailed by the crowd as Messiah, grant us the faith to know you and love you, that we may be found beside you on the way of the cross, which is the path of glory. Amen. We're not going to sing a hymn now, that will be for later on, but our readings this morning come from Alison, who's here in church with us. Welcome, Alison and from Carol, who is at home. The first reading is from Paul's letter to the Philippians, chapter 2, verses 3 to 11. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went on ahead, going to Jerusalem. When he'd come near Bethphage and Bethany, the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of disciples saying, go into the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find there a coat that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you bringing it? Say, the Lord needs it. So those who were sent departed and found it as he had told them. As they were untying the, goat, the coat, his disciples asked him, why are you untying the goat, the coat? And he said, the Lord needs it. Then they brought it to Jesus. And after throwing their cloaks on it, they went into the city. And now people kept spreading their cloaks in the road. He was now approaching the path down the Mount of Olives. And the whole multitude of the disciples 
began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds the people had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. And some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, his disciples tell them to stop. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would cry out. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Jesus. The words of my mouth and the thoughts of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight. Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. I think I'm meant to be at this lectern, so uh, there we are. Now, I'm going to tell you at the beginning of this sermon something that, with modesty, I have never told you before. And it may come as a surprise. In the 1960s, I won a prize in an essay competition. Um, thank you. I'm waiting for the applause. Thank you very much indeed. Um, it was an annual competition sponsored by a church in Leeds where I was a student. And I won, would you believe, three pounds. Great moment. And that meant a lot in those days. Now, honesty compels me to tell you that I discovered later that there were three entries in the competition. <laughs> None of us was regarded as winners. There was prize money of nine pounds, so they split it into three. <laughs> but three pounds was three pounds in those days. Now, why am I telling you this very important story? Um, the theme of that essay, which I've never forgotten, was Jesus is Lord, the first Christian creed. And today's theme is, I believe in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Now, sadly, I've not been able to find my masterpiece essay uh, to share with you. Uh, that, I don't know where it is, many moves since. But I've never forgotten the title. Jesus is Lord, the first Christian creed. Long before the Apostles' Creed was written, 300 years in fact, the early Christians wanted a simple statement of their faith. They wanted to express what they believed, and the first way of doing it was these three words, Jesus is Lord. In fact, just two words in Greek, Jesus kurios, Jesus kurios, Lord. They wanted to say something special about the person they were following. And they chose this word, kurios, Lord. Originally, it was a word that simply meant anybody who was superior to us, socially superior. And then gradually it got a political meaning. Um, the lords of the country, they were our lords and masters, our superiors, those in charge. And then gradually, it got a religious attraction. Um, so the emperor was known as Curios, Lord. He was regarded as the Lord. A religious, semi-religious figure, certainly. One to be worshipped. And he would have no rivals. So when the first disciples attached this word to a lowly preacher who died a cruel death, who was a virtual unknown, that was quite something. And they knew they were attaching it to a man who had come into the world in a lowly way, had shared a ministry in a relatively obscure part of the world, who'd entered the great city as a king, but on a donkey, to give him the name Lord was quite something. It was also quite dangerous. 
But when they called him Lord in this first creed, I think they meant three things. First, individually, they meant he is my Lord. Jesus is my Lord. I put him first, they were saying. I follow him. I believe in him. He makes my life different. He is my Lord. And they sometimes add my savior, but originally, he is my Lord. But secondly, they were saying, Jesus is our Lord. As a church, this small group of people, and there were tiny congregations in those days, they were saying, this is the one in whose name we are met. This is the one who has brought us together and held us together. This is the one we set before us as we meet day by day or week by week. Jesus is our Lord. But then they wanted to say, Jesus is or certainly can be everybody's Lord. And that was the dangerous bit. The emperors of the time didn't like any rivals. So to say that this modest, apparently humble, lowly man was Lord of everybody, to put it mildly, it was pushing it. And the result was some of them were imprisoned, many were persecuted, and some died. It was a very simple statement, but it was a dangerous one. It was the earliest creed. Now, things have been added to it over the next few hundred years. We're added to it, and we're taking 14 Sundays to go through it. So um, I guess there's quite a bit more to be said to the Apostles' Creed, but this is in some ways the heart of everything. Jesus is Lord. And I want to say today that what the early Christians said is what we say day by day, week by week, as followers of Jesus. As they did, we say, Jesus is my Lord. He's the one I believe in. He's the one I try to follow. He's the one whose humble love, whose healing powers, whose great teaching should shape my life. I want to make him my own. He is my example. He is my savior. He is my Lord. And I join with the voices of those who said Hosanna all those years ago, meaning help and save me, because he's the one who does that. Jesus is my Lord. But he's also our Lord in this church. And for those of you at home, he is the head of this church. He's the reason we are Christian, we are Christian. Each week, in building, at home, or in a blended way, to use the new word, some people say hybrid, I don't like that. We're blending our worship today. We are saying Jesus is our Lord. He's not one who lords it over us. He's one who brings humble leadership, who was willing to go into the city on a donkey, who shares with us his words, his actions, and his saving grace. And each Sunday when we meet, or each day when we gather, we hear about what he did as Lord. And when we can, and when we will be able, we take the bread and the wine to take him into ourselves as our Lord. But then, like the early disciples, we dare to say he is Lord of the world, which in many ways is ridiculous because a vast number of people don't accept him, don't recognize him. I don't think it's too controversial to say that most people in Hitchin wouldn't recognize him actively as their Lord. But we want to say 
He loves this world. He wants to offer his lordship to it. And we share in the task of living out that lordship among others. He can be lord of the world. It's a big ask. And there's a long way to go. But his humble love, the values he brought, the sharing he offered, the saving grace he gives, are for the whole world. And we continue to pray that that will happen. So Jesus is Lord. It earned me three pounds 50 odd years ago saying that or writing about it. I think much more than that. I hope it has given us all something to live by. The basic tenet of our faith. We are Christian people because we believe Jesus is Lord. And him be the glory. Amen. Thank you, John. We know that uh, usually when John is preaching, we smile, maybe titter lovingly at his three points. But I think there were never three more profound points given in one of your sermons, John, than we've had today that has reinforced for us that lordship of Jesus, both in our own hearts for us as individuals, but our church community and our church communities throughout the world. And we pray, and I think it is God's will and plan, that eventually it will be his lordship over every single human being and over the whole universe. John, thank you. And so, if you're able, we're going to stand now and confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed, those words in which we say aloud and together, Jesus is Lord. And thank you uh, for reminding me, Nick, that uh, you will find the Apostles' Creed on your hymn sheet and not in your order of service. Eventually we'll know it by heart, won't we? And we say together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now it's time for our prayers of intercession. Carol, I hope I didn't shock you too much by suggesting you were doing the reading, but it is now that we go over to Carol at home as she leads us in our prayers this morning. Thank you. Let us pray to the Father, who loved the world so much that he sent his only Son to give us life. Father, on this Palm Sunday, we think about Jesus entering Jerusalem, riding a young donkey as a sign of peace and fulfillment of prophecy. Jesus did not look like the Messiah people hoped for, they expected a king. But Jesus came humbly to save us from our sins and to bring us peace. Lord, this past year has brought strange times, illness and fear that none of us have known before. We look to you, Father, to guide us out of our fear and to remind us that we need the peace of Jesus in difficult days so that we live life to the purpose you have designed for us. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we need you more than ever now, but we know you arrive humbly, unnoticed by many and cheered by some. We know you are with us daily, Lord. You are with us in the prayers and services led by Nick, Andrew, John, Trish and Francis. You have been with us in the prayers led by the Littrick family. Thank you, Lord, for their faithfulness and your loving presence. Lord, you arrive and are with us in the early morning cars that transport health workers to their shifts. And when drivers in trucks unload groceries, thank you, Lord, for your presence. Lord, you arrive and are with us on public transport. When scientists travel to their labs, searching for virus vaccines and medicines, you arrive on foot as neighbours deliver meals to needy people or seniors isolated at home. Thank you, Lord, for your presence. Lord, you are with us when signals of satellites and messages of love circle the world to millions of people, reaching out to ask us if we are okay. Thank you, Lord, for your loving presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, at this springtime, we see the beauty and wonders of the earth in our gardens and countryside, in the sea and sky. We can see poor stewardship in our surroundings. And we ask you to help us to use the resources of the earth wisely. We pray for our leaders to act responsibly for the well-being of the earth, its climate and resources. And we pray you help us to take care of our environment. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, this week we pray for the good work of the Hub Church and we ask you to be with them in their Easter egg hunt on Good Friday. We pray for all who have been waiting to be baptised or confirmed and we pray for our baptism and bereavement visitors as they faithfully keep in touch with people. We pray for helping hearts homeless and all those they support and for the residents of Hyme Way and Seabone Close. Lord, may your presence and love be with them throughout this week. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for workers in hospitals, for those who nurse, comfort and heal for those involved in the daily patient struggle with pain and weakness. We thank you for all who care for vulnerable people in care homes, and we pray for people feeling isolated or depressed. Loving God, we pray for our church members who are suffering pain or bereavement. Send your Holy Spirit to those who grieve, and struggle with fear. We pray for our families, friends and children, and we thank you for the ways that they enrich our lives. With your help and presence, may we be aware of one, other, one another's needs. Help people to be kind to one another. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Loving God, be with us as we begin our journey through Holy Week. May your presence be seen clearly in what we do each day. 
may your joy and love flow through us as we go wherever you lead us. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. So we come now to the peace. And for those who are uh, joining us, I, I invite you to uh, put, put it in gallery mode and unmute yourselves. Um, the folks in church can, can see you um, and I'll swing the camera so that you can see the folks in church. I'll just give you a, a few seconds to, to do that. Once we were far off, but now in union with Christ Jesus, we have been brought near through the shedding of Christ's blood, for he is our peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Share a wave of peace together. <laughs> <laughs> Peace. <laughs> We're going to mute so. us back up again. I don't want to. I don't want them to. Be oh, I invite those at home to mute themselves for our next hymn, which is the offertory hymn. Um, we won't be sending a, a plate round in the service. Um, there is a a little box at the back that will make its way forward. Um, so if you do want to contribute via uh, that method, you're obviously welcome to do so. Um, Many people contribute directly to the banks and contribute in many, many other ways. So we sing our second hymn, My Song is Love Unknown.
Well, I, I expect we were muted in the church during that hymn, and so the folks at home couldn't hear us. Uh, but for your reference, folks at home, it, it sounded rather like a, um, a hive of very tuneful bees with everybody humming the hymn. It's quite an interesting experience. The Lord is here. The Spirit is with us. us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, for as the time of his passion and resurrection draws near, the whole world is called to acknowledge his hidden majesty. The power of the life-giving cross reveals the judgment that has come upon the world and the triumph of Christ crucified. He is the victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever, our advocate in heaven to plead our cause, exalting us there to join with angels and archangels, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take. Eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again, he praised you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence, his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the saviour of the world. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with St Mark and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Amen. Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. So draw near with faith. 
Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. And for those who are at home, draw near with faith. And though we do not all gather in person, yet still by the power of God, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Do this in remembrance that he died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. And so for the distribution this morning, I will come to, to you in your seats. Um, if you don't wish to receive the bread at this time for any reason whatsoever, um, if you indicate that to me by holding your orders of service, that would be very helpful. And for those who are at home, I invite you to pray the prayer at the top of page five, trusting that God even though you're not able to share in the bread this morning, that God will feed you uh, spiritually at this time. And we'll all gather together again in a few moments for our final hymn. Body of Christ broken. Body of Christ broken for you. The body of Christ broken. The body of Christ broken. Body of Christ broken for you. The body of Christ broken. The body of Christ broken for you. 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 The body of Christ. The body of Christ broken. The body of Christ broken. The body of Christ broken. Body of Christ broken for you. 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 Amen. The body of Christ broken. Body of Christ broken for you. Christ broken for you. Body of Christ broken. Body of Christ broken. Broken for you. Body of Christ broken for you. The body of Christ broken. The body of Christ broken. The body of Christ broken for you. And for those at home, the body of Christ broken for you and for us. Amen. Amen. And both for those here and at home, the body of Christ shed for us. Amen. We sing or hum our final hymn, Ride On, Ride On.
Let's pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you humbled yourself in taking the form of a servant and in obedience died on the cross for our salvation. Give us the mind to follow you and to proclaim you as Lord and King to the glory of God the Father. Amen. And we pray together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. So that brings us almost to the formal end of our service this morning. Uh, we will be having Zoom coffee. Uh, so for those at home, um, when the service finishes, you want to switch onto the other link for coffee, that's great. And anyone in here who wants to, to dash home um, within the speed limit, of course, uh, to join in Zoom coffee, you're very welcome. For obvious reasons, we won't be having tea, coffee and biscuits after the service here, which is a great shame. And I look forward to having biscuits with you all at the earliest opportunity. But it's been really wonderful to, to be with you in both formats this morning. Um, and as Holy Week begins, I hope that John's message to us that Jesus is our Lord resounds in your hearts. Um, and I hope as you reflect on what Christ has done this week, you're encouraged uh, and inspired by that. And so Christ crucified, draw him to yourself, to uh, draw you to himself, to find in him a sure ground for faith, a firm support for hope and the assurance of sins forgiven and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you and those you love now and always. Amen. Amen.